Hey guys, today we are going to answer the question, how do I solve two-step equations involving rational numbers? So to solve two-step equations involving rational numbers, we need to isolate the variable like usual by doing inverse operations in reverse order. The steps are generally to undo the addition or subtraction with inverse operations to zero out the constant, undo the multiplication or division with inverse operations to eliminate the coefficient, and then remember if the coefficient is a fraction, you are going to do the opposite of div dividing by the fraction, which is to multiply by the reciprocal to isolate the variable. These are generally, or these are the three questions you can ask yourselves to help figure out those steps. So ask yourself, what am I solving for? What is happening to that thing? And then how would you undo that in reverse order? So when I write out the one, two, three, I'm referring to these steps. And make sure that we are following all integer and rational number operation rules when solving the equation, and then we'll verify our solutions as well. All right, so let's look at number one. I need to isolate the variable. It's generally gonna be addition and subtraction to remove the constant, and then multiplication or division to remove the coefficient, and we can figure out exactly what the steps are with the one, two, three questions. So let's do that. The first question is, what are we solving for? We're solving for x. Second question is, what is happening to x? The first thing, the closest thing that's happening to x is it's being multiplied by 2.1. And then the second step is it's being subtracted by 2. So third question is how do I undo that? Let's go in reverse order to do the inverse of that. So the inverse of minus two is plus two, and then the inverse of times 2.1 is dividing by 2.1. So now we have our steps. We can go ahead and solve this equation. So the opposite of minus two, I'm gonna remove that constant first, is by adding two. So I'm gonna add two to both sides and we zero out those constants, negative two plus two is zero, and I bring down the 2.1x, and then it equals 6.4 plus two is 8.4. And now I need to divide by 2.1, since x is being multiplied by 2.1. And x equals, I need to do 8.4 divided by 2.1, I'm going to move both of those decimals over once to help me divide. So 21 divided by 84. I think 21 would go into 84 four times. Four times one is four, two times four is eight, yes. So the answer is four, x equals four. Okay, last thing I need to do is verify that this solution is correct. So I'm going to replace x with four and make sure that it makes the equation true. So 2.1 times four minus two should equal 6.4. We just did 2.1 times, well, we did 21 times four. If I just add my decimal in there, it's 8.4 minus two equals 6.4. And 8.4 minus two is 6.4. So I just verified that x equals four is our solution. All right, number two, I have one half x minus 16 equals negative three. So the first thing is what am I solving for? I'm solving for x. Second question is what is happening to x? The first thing that is happening to x is it's being multiplied by one half. And the second thing that's happening is we're subtracting 16 from it. So the inverse of that would be to add 16 and then the opposite of multiplying by one half is dividing by one half. And remember to divide by a fraction, we multiply by its reciprocal of two over one instead. So our last step is, our first step is going to be to add 16 and then the last step will be to multiply by the reciprocal which is two over one. So let's go ahead and do that to solve for x. I need to undo that plus or minus 16 by adding 16. Negative 16 plus 16 zeros out and I'm left with one half X equals negative three plus 16. Those are different signs, so I'm gonna subtract 16 minus three is 13. And then the 16 has the larger absolute value, so this will be positive. 
Okay, so we added 16 to both sides. Now I need to undo this times one by dividing by one half, which remember is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of two over one. So two times one is two, one times two is two, two over two is one. That goes to one and the X is isolated like we wanted it to be. And then 13 times two over one or 13 times two is 26. So X equals 26. Let's verify this by substituting in 26 for X. So one half times instead of X, I'm gonna put 26 minus 16 should equal negative three. So one half times 26 is 13. So 13 minus 16 should equal negative three. If I add the opposite here, I can see they have different signs. So I'm gonna subtract 16 minus 13 is three and then keep the sign of the larger absolute value, which is negative. So this solution worked for this equation. So X is equal to 26. Okay, let's look at number three. I am solving for X. X is being multiplied by four first and then adding 1.2 to it. And then the opposite of plus 1.2 is to subtract 1.2 and the opposite of multiplying by four is to divide by four. So now that we have our plan of action, we can go ahead and solve this equation. First thing I'm going to do is remove that constant by subtracting 1.2. This zeroes out, I'm gonna bring down the four X and then I'm going to need to borrow here. 10 minus two is eight, bring down that decimal. Three minus one is two and bring down the one. So four X equals 12.8 and now my last step is to divide by four. So X equals, I need to do 12.8 divided by four. Four can go into 12 three times, three times four is 12. Subtract, bring down the 0.8. And four can go into eight two times, and two times four is eight. Okay, so X equals 3.2. Let's verify that this is true by substituting in 3.2 for X and seeing if it makes the equation true. So four times 3.2 plus 1.2 should equal 14. Four times 3.2, four times three is 12, and four times 0.2 is 0.8. So 12.8 plus 1.2 should equal 14. Let me verify that. 12.8 plus 1.2. Yes, I get 14 equals 14. So 3.2 worked for the solution here. All right, number four. I am solving for X. X is being divided by five and then we're adding 10 to it. So I need to do the inverse of that. So the opposite of plus 10 is subtracting 10. And then the opposite of dividing by five is multiplying by five. So here is our plan. So let's remove that constant of plus 10 first by subtracting 10. And I get X divided by five equals 10.25 minus 10 is 0 0.25. Okay, now I need to do the opposite of dividing by five, which is multiplying by five. So X equals, I have two decimal points that I'll have to add back at the end. I'm gonna do 25 times five and then add those two decimal points back in. 
So I get 125 with the two decimals, it's 1.25. So x equals 1.25. Let's just verify that this makes the equation true. So I'm gonna do 1.25 divided by five plus 10, and I should get 10.25. So 1.25 divided by five is 0.25 since I just did the opposite of that. And 0.25 plus 10 is 10.25. So I just verified that x equals 1.25 is the correct solution. Okay, number five, I have 2 thirds x plus 12 equals 18. So I am solving for x. x is being multiplied by 2 thirds, and then we're adding 12 to it. So the inverse of that would be to subtract 12, and then the opposite of times 2 thirds is divide by 2 thirds. And we know that dividing by a fraction, we just multiply by the reciprocal or multiply by the opposite instead. So we're gonna divide by 12, or sorry, subtract 12 first, and then divide by 2 thirds, which we'll accomplish by multiplying by the reciprocal of 3 halves. So let's get started on this plan by removing that plus 12 constant. So we're gonna subtract 12 from both sides. The constants zero out and I bring down the 2 thirds x and then 18 minus 12 is six. And then x is being multiplied by 2 thirds and the opposite of multiplying by 2 thirds is multiplying by the reciprocal of 3 halves. So that simplifies out to a 1, so now x is isolated. And then 6 times 3 halves would be 18 over 2, which is 9. So I get x equals 9. So now I just need to verify that 9 works as a solution for x. So I'm going to substitute it in. 2 thirds times 9 plus 12 should equal 18. So 2 thirds times 9 would equal 18 over 3, which is 6. So 6 plus 12 should equal 18, which it does. So the solution here, x equals 9, is correct. Okay, last one, negative 1.5x plus 24. I am solving for x. x is being multiplied by negative 1.5. And then we are adding 24 to it. So the inverse of that is to subtract 24 and then divide by a negative 1.5. So here are the steps. Let's follow them to get x by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 24 from both sides. The constants zero out, I'm left with 1 point, negative 1.5x, don't forget to bring that sign down. And then 28.5 minus 24 would be 4.5. And then the last step is to divide by a negative 1.5. So x will equal a positive divided by a negative is going to be a negative. So I know my solution will be negative, and now let me do long division to figure this out. 4.5 divided by 1.5. I'm gonna move both of their decimals over once. So I can think of this as 15 divided by 45. 15 goes into 45 three times. So x equals negative three. And the last thing I need to do is verify that this makes the equation true. So I'm going to replace x with negative 3. So negative 1.5 times negative 3 plus 24 should equal 28.5. 
So negative 1.5 times 3, negative 3, a negative times a negative is going to be a positive. And then I can think of this as 15 times 3 and then just add a decimal point back in. So that's going to be a positive 4.5 plus 24 should equal 28.5, which it does. So I just verified that this solution works. So the answer here, x equals negative 3, was correct.